Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create quick and easy fancy text boxes in Illustrator. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. We're going to create all four of these text boxes. They're the kind of boxes that you could put text over the top of and they've all got different things happening with them. So I thought it was a good tutorial to look and see how you might create these yourself. Let's start with this one here and I'm going to start with a circle which I'll draw using the ellipse tool. At the moment I have a blue fill and a black stroke. I don't want any stroke at all so I'm just going to disable the stroke. I'll hold the shift key as I draw the circle onto my artboard. Now we're going to create this little call out element off the edge of our circle with the pen tool. So I'm going to click on the pen tool and I'll leave these settings in place. Now even if you're not very good with the pen tool this is pretty easy to do. I'm going to click and drag from inside the circle and I want to drag because I want to make this the direction that my line is going in. And then I'm going to click here because this is about the curve that I want. And now I want to go backwards and I want to end up over here. So I'm going to click and drag in the direction that I want to go in. And that will create this nice little curved piece for me. And I'm just going to close off this path by just clicking back on the starting point. So targeting the selection tool there, you can see I now have my shape and I'm actually really quite happy with it so I don't think I really want much in the way of changes to it. Maybe I'll just make that point down a little bit. But given that this is the shape that I now want to create, I'm going to select over both the pieces and I'm going to use the Pathfinder and you can get to that by selecting Window and then Pathfinder. And I want to use the Union here, or the Unite, because that will put the two shapes together to make just one shape. So we're halfway to our shape, we just need to get these little dots in it and that's done with the stroke. So again with the Select tool in place, let's have a look at the Appearance panel. You get to that by selecting Window and Appearance. Right now it's telling us that we have no stroke at all, so I'm going to select a white stroke and I want it to be about a three point stroke. And you can just say that it's now appearing around the outside of the shape. But I want mine to be dots, so we're going to click here on the word stroke to open up the panel. Let's just see if I can get that on the screen here. I'm just going to open up this panel so I can now create my dots. I want to do this by selecting the round cap option and then I want a dashed line. And we create these dots by setting the dash to zero points and then the gap to something around about the same amount as the weight of the line. So I'm going to use four points, the exact same amount. And when I do that I get little dots around the edge of the shape. Well that's halfway there because this one's got dots but they're inside the shape not around the edge. We can pull them inside the shape using the Path Offset option. So in the Appearance panel here I'm going to make sure that I have this stroke selected because that's what I want to move. And then I'll choose Effect and then Path and then Offset Path. I'm going to click to preview the change and now I'm just going to arrow or click inside this offset and start using the down arrow key to start moving this shape in. And you can see that as I change the offset to a negative amount these little dots are starting to appear inside the shape. When they're where I want them to be I'll just click OK. Now I think I need a bit more spacing here but that's managed by the stroke. So I'm going to click on the stroke and let's increase this to five points or maybe six. And there's a shape that looks pretty much the same as that shape there. So there's the first of our four shapes. Let's have a look at this one as the second one. Again I'm going to make sure that I have my fill and my stroke set up. I don't want a stroke and I do want a fill. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to create the basis of this shape here. So I'm just dragging out a rectangle. Now let's go and get an ellipse and I'm going to draw an ellipse 
across the top of the rectangle and that's going to give me this second shape. If I click out of the way you'll see that we're getting the approximate shape that we're looking at. Now I'm going for the ellipse again and this time I want to create one that is a little bit taller than the previous one so I want to get some really nice curvy edges happening here. Now that might be a little bit much so I can target the selection tool and just shrink this down a little bit if I want. Just going to make sure that it's nicely centered over the shape. Well actually I think it's too, still a bit too big. So let's make sure it's in position and let's call that good for this shape. Now it is three shapes so we want to make it just one so I'm going to select over them all with the selection tool and let's go to the Pathfinder palette which has gone walking. Don't know. Oh here it is, it was behind the other palette and I'm again going to choose this Unite one because we need to unite this into a single shape. Having done that we need a stroke again and the stroke effect is going to be pretty much what we did over here but we just don't want dots in it. So with the shape selected I'm going to select a white stroke and I'm going to make it say a two point stroke and we need to bring it in. So again with the stroke selected we're going to choose effect and then path and then offset path. Preview it so we can see what's happening. The stroke is around the outside of the object so we're just going to bring in the offset so that we bring it inside the object. So with the stroke selected I'm going to choose effect and then path and then offset path. Again I'm going to select to turn the preview on so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to bring that line inside the shape and click OK. Now if I want to put a slight edge on the shape I can do that too because you can have multiple strokes. Again with the selection tool I'm going to click on the shape. This is our white stroke. Let's add a blue stroke. So I'm going to click to add a new stroke and I'm going to use this exact same color that we were using previously. It's this color here. But I want it to be a little bit darker so I'm just going to double click on it and just drag it down a little bit so that this stroke is just a little bit darker than the original shape fill is. And there's our finished piece. Let's have a look at this one. This one's fairly easy to achieve by creating a rectangle. Again I'm going to make sure first of all that I have nothing selected. I'm just going to get rid of the stroke and just have a fill and let's drag out a rectangle here. Now I'm going to create a small circle because I'm going to use the circle to cut out the corners. So I'm going to hold the shift key as I draw an ellipse. Now I usually do this outside so I can just eyeball to make sure it's going to be about the right size and then I move it into position. And I want it to intersect with the corner of the rectangle. Having done that I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key as I drag a second version of the circle away and if I add the Shift key it's going to go horizontally and then when I get it into position I'm going to let go my left mouse button and then let go the Shift and Alt keys. Now let's go and select again this circle and Shift click on this second one. I'm now going to drag downwards but I'm going to add the Alt or Option key in as well as the Shift key so I'm making duplicates of the original shapes. So now I've got four corners. I'm going to select the five shapes that are making this piece up and go down to my Pathfinder palette. Previously we've been using Unite because we wanted to join these together. This time we want to break them apart and I'm going to use Divide because that's going to break out these corners. And then I'll choose Object, Ungroup. So now I can go to each of these pieces in turn, select it and press Delete. And I can get rid of the circles because they're being used now to cut out a corner from the shape and this is my finished shape. It's got two strokes. So let's go into the stroke 
here in the Appearance panel, add a white stroke. We're going to add quite a wide one this time. Let's make this 2.5. And again, I need to bring it in. So I'll choose Effect, Path, Offset Path. I want to preview this and I'm just going to bring it inside the shape. Once I've done that, I can actually copy this particular stroke. So I can grab the stroke and just drag it down onto this icon here and that creates a second stroke on top of the first. Now I can make it a little bit smaller, for example one point in size. Open up this panel here because here is the offset path setting for it. It's exactly the same as the other one so it's hidden because it's on top of the other one. Well let's just double click offset path and let's go and just adjust this path a little bit more. We're just working on the second stroke's offset path so we're not affecting the first. I'll click OK when I have it in position. You can see the power of the appearance panel here in allowing us to create multiple strokes around an object and to move them inside using that path offset command. So let's have a look at this final shape which is done using the Polygon tool. So I'm going to click here on the Polygon tool but actually I'm going to just click in the middle of my document because I want to make sure that I'm going to get the right size. Well I'm less worried about the radius but I am worried about the number of sides because this object has six sides and if I had previously drawn for example an eight sided figure then that's what I would get if I didn't check to make sure that I'm getting six. So I'll just click OK and here's my six sided figure. Not exactly what I want but nearly. So I'm just going to drag it out to make it the approximate shape that I want and since we were making these a different color let's go and make it the same blue color as everything else. Now this shape here has slightly rounded corners and we can create those rounded corners using an effect with the shape selected. I'm going to choose Effect and then Stylize and then Round Corners. Again I want to see what I'm doing so I'm going to click on the Preview and let's start working on these rounded corners. I think about 15 points is going to be sufficient for this shape so let's just see what we've got. We've got a shape that's similar to this one here but we need a stroke again so with the shape selected let's go and pick up our stroke. Let's make it a white stroke. Um, around one point is pretty good but we need to bring it inside the shape so with the stroke selected again we'll choose Effect and then Path and then Offset Path. We want to preview what we're doing and bring the stroke inside the shape. Now I'm thinking the stroke is a little bit thin so let's take this up to 1.5 which we can do at any time. Now if you have a look at these two shapes you'll see that the stroke here is doing something just a little bit different to the stroke here. Right now this stroke is right inside this shape and it's following the shape it doesn't do that up here and the reason is that I rounded the corners on this stroke independently of rounding the corners on the shape. So let's see how we would do that. Again with the stroke selected so that we're affecting only the stroke with this effect I'm going to again choose Effect and then Stylize and then Round Corners. Let's preview what we're doing and this time you can see that the round corners are being separately applied to the stroke. So we're getting this slightly different bent effect on this inside line. So I'll just click OK. I could have changed the radius but in actual fact this looks pretty good to me. So there's a way of creating four interesting shapes that you can use for text in your illustrations. They're created using shapes that are either added together using this Unite option in the Pathfinder or in the case of this one we use Divide. We've added one or two strokes to the objects using the Appearance panel. We've learned how to create dotted lines, make rounded corners and a lot more. You can 
if you want to add even more strokes using the appearance panel there's no limit to the number of strokes that you can apply so you can get really quite complex results from that appearance panel. So I hope you find a use for these illustrative techniques in your day-to-day -day work in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this YouTube video tutorial. Look out for more of my tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Illustrator, Photoshop, Lightroom and a whole lot more.